and we'll. All right. Well, thanks everyone for joining us today. Um, this is the third in our series of Steer Virtual Trainings, uh, all about citizen science and eclipse programming. Uh, today, we are absolutely thrilled to be joined by some wonderful folks uh, who are involved with the Globe Observer Program to talk about their special uh, Eclipse app that they're pushing out through Globe Observer uh, to be available during the Eclipse, and we're going to be talking all about that, which is really, really exciting. Um, we'll go ahead and get started today. Uh, so we, I thought we'd go around. Uh, all the presenters might be able to introduce themselves. Uh, my name is Dylan Connolly. My pronouns are he and they. I'm an education specialist uh, at the Space Science Institute, the National Center for Interactive Learning. Uh, and I'm joined today by some wonderful people who I'll allow to introduce themselves right now. Hi, everybody. Welcome. My name is Claire Ratcliffe Adams. Uh, my pronouns are she, her. And I'm an education associate at the Space Science Institute located in Boulder, Colorado. Hi, everybody. My name is Teresa Schwerin, and my pronouns are she, hers, and I am Vice President of Education at the Institute for Global Environmental Strategies, and I'm a former librarian, and a big part of my job is engaging libraries in citizen science through Globe Observer. Hello, everyone. My name is Jessica Taylor. My pronouns are she, her, and I am a scientist at NASA's Langley Research Center that's located in Hampton, Virginia, and I lead the Globe Clouds Project. Hey everyone. I'm Kevin Sikowski. I'm a professor at the University of Toledo in the Department of Geography and Planning, and I'm the PI for the Globe Mission Earth Project. Awesome. Thanks so much, everyone. So our agenda today, we're going to do some brief introductions. We'll also do a quick icebreaker uh, just to get everybody's brain thinking in a citizen science space. Uh, then I'll do a brief introduction to the SEAL project or the Solar Eclipse Activities for Libraries project. Uh, Claire is going to be sending out a, a, a link bank, uh, which is also our Getting Started with SEAL resource blog, um, which I'll be talking about in a bit, which has all of the resources you need to get started with the SEAL project. Uh, then we'll be doing a quick introduction to Globe Eclipse. Uh, talking about a fantastic opportunity for y'all to apply for a free Globe Eclipse library kit that has uh, some thermometers, a bunch of really cool stuff in there uh, to do some really cool observations during the eclipse. We'll talk about how to go further with Globe using Globe, uh, globe surface temperature, and then we'll open it up for a Q&A uh, at the end. So we've got a lot of information to share with you. I think it's going to be a really fun hour. Uh, so just to think about um, kind of, I'm sure if you've joined us for one of our uh, previous Citizen Science Eclipse webinars, you might recognize this icebreaker. But since we're getting all sorts of different people, I really think it's a good place to, to start uh, our thinking today. So Citizen Science is a great way to connect your community with big ideas about the world around us. Citizen Science is all about people all over the world collecting data and contributing to huge data sets uh, that can provide really, really big pictures of what's going on in the world around us. So if you all would be so kind, I see people are already introducing themselves in the chat. Um, I would love for y'all to throw uh, some uh, ways in the chat of what are ways, either STEM related or not, that you've connected your community uh, and your library to big ideas. Uh, I was lucky enough, I'll share a little story. I was lucky enough uh, to, when I, in the 2017 total eclipse, working at a uh, small natural history museum in Rhode Island called the Roger Williams Natural History Museum. And we had a big eclipse event. It was huge. Uh, and we were lucky enough to get uh, some solar eclipse glasses from a local library, uh, which helped us out uh, and was able to give us some viewing glasses. Uh, and we were able to connect families with ideas around solar science, uh, histories of the eclipse, really, really cool. Just hopefully like some of y'all are going to be doing in 2023 and 2024. Uh, so, ooh, we got some I, some answers coming into the chat fast. All right, fast and hot. Uh, so we've got um, uh, Alnali said uh, we had a citizen science scavenger hunt. Each clue had a different citizen science project, the QR code to sign up for that project. That's a fantastic idea. I love that. I am going to be stealing that and recommending that to people. Um, Kara said, I hope to host our Eclipse event at our local wildlife refuge. They'll be having Refuge Day. That's a fantastic idea. I love partnering with other organizations to do Eclipse programming. Uh, Bobby said uh, they had an event with glasses, Sunny D, Moon Pies, and Eclipse Info and Crafts. 
Sunny D is the perfect Eclipse beverage. I love that. That's fantastic. And Moon Pies. What a great, great uh, thematic uh, idea. Uh, Dana said that they worked with uh, their high school science department to do a presentation for the 2017 Eclipse. Fantastic. Uh, can't offer citizen science kits at, their, uh, kits at their library, and they've done some science starter projects in their bag. Fantastic. Um, we have, uh, we've done two previous webinars with science starter. They're posted to our uh, YouTube page. You can also find links to those in our Getting Started with Resource uh, Deal uh, blog. Uh, science starter has some amazing projects and access to citizen science uh, projects. Highly recommend y'all check those out and check out those webinars for more information on uh, how to get involved with science starter. Uh, Justin said they planted native uh, native plants rain garden to recapture rain from their roof and reintroduce native plants to their neighborhood. Amazing uh, project. Kelly said, I've done the crowd the tap in our community, uh, which is a nationwide citizen science project that teaches people how to test their water and report materials of water pipes in their home. Really important work. Uh, you know, as we know, pipes and pipe uh, uh, abilities to transfer clean water, huge issue in this country. So that's a really, really cool project to be involved with. Uh, Miriam Gray from Heart Michigan said, uh, we ordered Eclipse classes and hosted an event at the Heart Public Library for the last Eclipse. Absolutely. Uh, Laura said, bird watching focused programs that encourage participation in eBird. Really, really fantastic. Great uh, citizen science app, eBird. Uh, Jesse at Brockham Public Library said, we use the last Eclipse to showcase our stargazing tools that are available for checkout and teaching how to use them. Fantastic. So glad to hear you have some uh, stargazing equipment as a circulation item. Uh, Deirdre said, we have a huge library event during the 2017 eclipse, standing room only with people lining up three hours ahead of time. That's so cool for, and as you say, who would imagine such interest in a library event? I think that's one of the powers of these eclipses, you know, they're such a rare event and especially in the U.S. getting sort of, you know, totality or uh, big coverage for annularity, really, really a great opportunity to have a big, big community event at your library. Uh, Paula said, we've had some few programs with a meteorologist whose hobby is stargazing. Uh, he owns several large telescopes, he uses for programs. Fantastic. Connecting with local enthusiasts is a really great way uh, to get scientists and uh, subject matter experts involved. Uh, on the Getting Started with SEAL resource blog post, there's some links to NASA's Night Sky Network uh, and uh, the Solar System Ambassadors, uh, which are great ways if you've never used the Night Sky Network. Sorry, I think J uh, Night Sky Network is JPL. Uh, but uh, Night Sky Network is a fantastic way to find uh, local astronomy clubs and local enthusiasts in your area if you're looking for experts to come and speak at your event. Uh, Sandy said, we just got a grant for citizen science kits and we'll be doing programming with that this summer. Last year we had the plant wildflower grant and got pollinator fr uh, friendly plants and planters. Pollinator events, always really fantastic. Uh, pollinators like bees, uh, you know, are threatened right now because of climate change, all that stuff. So po ed pollinator education, super important. Uh, someone in another branch of my system works with the National Audubon Society for a great backyard bird count. Absolutely fantastic. Oh man, y'all have so many. I'm going to have to like cut this off because we have to move on to the, to, to, the, to the webinar. But I am so thrilled. This, uh, if y'all are interested in any of the ideas, the chat transcript will be uh, when we post the video to our YouTube page. I will include a link to the chat transcripts if you all want to look up any of these later uh, to get some ideas about what other librarians are doing. Uh, you can check out that chat transcript uh, with the video recording. Thanks so much for sharing all of your ideas. Uh, Y'all, uh, librarians across this country never cease to amaze me with your creativity, willingness to be involved in really awesome STEM programs. This is why it's so exciting to do webinars like this and connect y'all with uh, some really cool programming and ideas because y'all just take them and run with it. Really, really amazing. Uh, so if this is your first exposure to the SEAL project, I'll just give you a little bit of idea of what we're doing. Uh, through some very generous funding from the Gordon and Betty Moore Foundation, uh, the Space Science Institute has been able to uh, start what we're calling the SEAL project, uh, which is a, a nationwide project we're doing to get people excited for the eclipses coming up in uh, 2023 and 2024. Uh, 2023, we have an annular eclipse, which means the moon will not completely cover the sun. You'll have a ring called an annulus around it, uh, which is really, really cool. And then there'll be a total eclipse next summer, or no, sorry, next spring in April uh, that will be uh, also visible uh, for in most of the U.S. So to prepare for those, we are allowing libraries uh, across the country to apply for up to 2,000 free solar viewing glasses. 
uh, per application. The link to get this uh, to get those free glasses is in the Getting Started with Seal resource blog post that Claire is going to be sharing in the chat. And once you're signed up. Uh, for those glasses, you'll also be connected to our StarNet community website, which is a social media website we're using to connect librarians with us here at SSI, uh, folks at NASA and other uh, solar scientists, as well as each other to share ideas around Eclipse programming. So you'll be automatically registered for that once you register for your glasses. You'll also be signed up for the SEAL newsletter, which is how we're going to be sending out all the information about upcoming webinars, uh, new activities we're developing, uh, professional development opportunities, and other opportunities like applying for the Globe Observer uh, kits that we're going to be talking about today. We're also doing in-person trainings in all 50 states and four territories. I think we're about 50% of the way through right now. I think we've done about half our in-person webinars. Um, if you're interested in attending one of those, uh, we're organizing all of those through State Library Association. So uh, check with your state library uh, for information on how you can get in on one of those in-person trainings if you would like to. We're also providing recorded trainings and virtual workshops, just like the one y'all are attending right now. Um, we also have, um, to aid in your programming, uh, we have some fantastic circulating kits uh, that are going to state libraries uh, that have things like solar telescopes, uh, storybooks, uh, ready to go, out of the box, uh, hands-on activities, all really, really fantastic. Each state library is handling circulation of those kits differently. There should be at least four kits for each state. Uh, contact your state library if you're interested in getting one of the, uh, those circulation kits. We are also providing access to scientists, volunteers, Eclipse subject matter experts, and other librarians through our StarNet online community, uh, which once again, that's community.starnetlibraries.org. Uh, uh, if you register for your free solar viewing glasses, you will be automatically signed up for that StarNet community site. Um, if somebody has already signed up uh, for your, uh, uh, ooh, excuse me, uh, if, already, if somebody's already signed up for glasses at your library and you would still like to be in on the newsletter, uh, go ahead and reach out to me via email. I'm going to put my email in the chat right now. I can spell science. There we go. Um, uh, go ahead and reach out to me if you uh, want to get on that uh, registered for the community site uh, and the uh, and on our newsletter. I will hook you up with Sky, our admin person who's handling all those registrations. Um, Corey, we are focusing on public libraries, but I believe we have had discussions of opening up to school libraries. Um, go ahead and uh, if you have further questions about that, reach out to me and I will send uh, connect you with uh, our admin person to answer some of those questions that I may, I don't know if we're doing school libraries just yet, but I can go ahead and uh, uh, if you email me, I will go ahead and direct your question to a person who can actually answer that properly. Um, so here, um, if you're watching at home later or you're looking at this slide deck, uh, once we publish it later, uh, this QR code will link you directly to that SEAL resources blog post I was telling you about that has all sorts of information on how to get started with registering for glasses, signing up for our newsletter. Uh, there's also an FAQ webinar that we did a few months ago with, uh, that was hosted by Annie Holland and a few other folks from the SEAL team that goes much more into depth, a little bit more about the, uh, the background science around the eclipse that's coming up and all the information about the SEAL project coming up. Uh, we also, if you uh, are interested, we also have a link for the getting, we're doing monthly getting started with SEAL webinars uh, from May through August. Um, and so if you are interested in more information, we'll be going more into depth at those getting started with SEAL webinar, uh, webinars about registering for glasses, uh, how many glasses you can register for, uh, doing a hands-on activity demonstration, all sorts of good stuff. So highly recommend if you would like to get started with SEAL uh, to attend one of those. Uh, so now I will hand this over to Jessica, who's going to talk a little bit about the Globe Eclipse program. Uh, so go ahead and take it away, Jessica. All right, thank you so much. Um, thank you for having me. Uh, one of the reasons I'm so excited to talk to you about this is that I've been involved in the GLOBE program um, since around 2000 and I really credit that program with giving me the background and confidence in science uh, to become a scientist at NASA. So I'm excited to share this with you. Let's go ahead to the next slide. Um, so what is the GLOBE program? Um, so GLOBE is a community of scientists, educators, uh, researchers, students, the community, 
uh, general public, citizen scientists from around the world. There are over 120 countries that participate in this program. And when I say participate is what we all agree is that we're all gonna agree to collect scientific measurements of our environment in the same ways so that way our data can be compared around the world. And the program itself um, has been running uh, also for over 25 years. It is sponsored by NASA and receives support from various federal agencies, including NOAA, NSF, the Department of State, and it's implemented out of UCAR. We have over 40,000 educators that are that includes both formal and informal educators. Over 80,000 students participate in the program. And yes, that number is accurate. Over 240,000 community citizens and scientists around the world engage with us. Next one. So hopefully some of you have already downloaded the app. The app is called Globe Observer. It's a free download for iOS or Android. And inside the app, after you create your login, you'll be able to access a number of tools to help you make observations. And so we have a tool for clouds. Um, I'm an atmospheric science That's scientist. That's the one that our team leads. Um, there's also a tool for mosquito habitat, um, which is really an interesting tool because not only is it helping you identify, but it's really encouraging um, stewardship as well and making sure that we eliminate uh, mosquito habitat breeding sites. Land cover is another tool, turning your phone into um, data collection for land cover. And the tree tool um, helps you make observations of your trees, identifying the height and circumference. These tools are always available in the app. So if you were to download the app right now, or if you already have the app, you should be able to see all of these tools available. All right, next slide. Um, and the tool that we want to talk about today, though, is the Eclipse tool. This is a special tool that only appears um, just before uh, an eclipse. And so I'll be talking you through something that you're not really able to see just yet, but follow along with me um, because it's incorporating a number of those other observations like clouds and land cover that you could go ahead and start doing. So next. Okay, why do we care about this? Um, you know, the, the eclipse, this amazing phenomenon, um, but our angle here is trying to better understand what happens to our atmosphere during this really interesting time, right? Because we get our energy from the sun. And so changes in how much solar energy we get can cause changes to the air temperature, the surface temperature, clouds, maybe wind. And so we have these science questions like, what's gonna happen when the sun is blocked by the moon during an eclipse? And that's the type of investigation that drives the data that you're gonna see us asking to be collected. Next. And you'll notice some of our images say dropped on them because it hasn't come out just yet. So in the Globe Observer app, when you open it up, you'll see a home screen that looks very much like this with the four tools that I had mentioned. And then for right before the eclipse, you'll see another tool pop up at the top that says eclipse. And again, this is encouraging us to use this to better understand how atmospheric conditions change because of this phenomenon. And this is actually a picture of me in 2017. I um, set up a station at NASA Langley. I was in a partial eclipse and I collected clouds and air temperature and surface temperature during the eclipse. And I did get to see these changes myself. Go ahead. So we're gonna play this animation. And what you see here is every single one of those dots is someone during the 2017 eclipse, making an observation of air temperature. And we see as the eclipse crosses over the United States, and we see it especially kind of looking at that path of totality, we see these changes in air temperature. So people were using the app before 
and after the eclipse to track those changes. This is a great thing to do also if you are thinking about doing programming um, and needing something to do with folks before the uh, eclipse actually happens. Um, and also if you have a cloudy day. Well, clouds are also really important. <laughs> Go ahead to the next slide. So we're going to hop right in. That, that slide's perfect. Um, what did we do with all that data, right? So I showed you a bunch of data from 2017. And the whole point of GLOBE is to make this environmental science observations available to everyone. And so professional scientists and others can use it as well, right? So um, here we have pictured a colleague from mine here at NASA Langley. We worked together on a paper that is published using those globe observations tw from 2017 to see how did cloud cover impact the temperature drop that was experienced at various locations. And so that paper is available at the link there. And we also really encourage in GLOBE um, youth projects as well. And so students from around the world have also been submitting projects based off of this data. Next. Okay, so here is a picture of someone using the app. So you'll see that's what it would look like on your screen. And then these next slides, I'm gonna talk you through the type of data that you'll submit. Go ahead. So the first thing that you do is once you get into, and like I said, remember that that tool for the eclipse won't open right away. It's gonna open just before the eclipse itself. Um, so a few days before you can set up your eclipse um, information. And so you're going to tell us if you're going to take air temperature, we want to know what type of thermometer you're using. Um, there are lots of different options for thermometers out here. And this is the one time that um, we'll also be allowing um, Fahrenheit to be entered. Um, we typically only use the metric system, um, but all your data will get converted into Celsius. And then the green button here shows you where you can activate alarms for taking measurements. So we're going to remind you during the eclipse, uh, giving you a cadence of when to make these observations. And so you can turn that on. And then the blue button that you see, there's a location there. It's really important that you make sure when you um, down install the app that you allow geolocation services, uh, because a lot of what we're doing is really dependent on what your latitude and longitude is. And so we'll be able to identify where you're located as long as you've um, made that available in the app. And I'll show you here on another screen that we'll actually be able to be tracking the path of totality for you and when your maximum um, solar eclipse is gonna be. And then there's also a tool, uh, the bottom button is a land cover observation because we wanna see what your surroundings are, right? Because what's around you might impact the um, what you experience during the eclipse. All right, next. Okay, so once you're inside the tool, you'll see a bunch of different buttons. And so I wanna draw your attention to the ones here in the center of the screen. You're gonna see that in the app, it's going to be telling you your current time and then time of max, time of maximum amount of your eclipse, right? Whether that's the annular or the total solar eclipse. So you'll be able to track and see what time it is at your location, once you have geolocation services turned on. And then that's how we're gonna be able to tell you those reminders of making those observations of clouds and air temperature. And then there are a number of buttons that um, remind you of safety, for example, is this orange button with the exclamation point in the triangle. There's a gear button that's yellow um, that looks like it has a, a gear symbol on it that gives you some of the settings that you can change what you just did in the um, what we had in the previous slide. If something changes, you could go in there. And then there's a blue button that has these um, vertical, like a bar graph, and that's where you can access your data. All right, next. And remember, these slides are going to be made available to you so you can come back and take a refresher on this before the eclipse happens. So what we'll be doing is doing a countdown to your next observation. So there will be a little button that says, here's when we want you to submit your next observation. And then a button that says, enter data now. And it's as simple as that. You'll just click on it and you'll be able to scroll to the temperature as well as enter your clouds. 
next. Um, and once you do that, you'll see that that graph icon before the blue uh, icon that then has the vertical bar graphs will get a number at the top and that's telling you how many data points you have. And so it'll show you how much data you've collected and that's where you'll be able to um, go to those data points and edit them if you need to. All right, next. And then when you are going through there, again, the app is giving you that uh, that cadence, that frequency of saying air temperature, do you wanna submit a cloud observation? And so you can say yes or no, if you wanna submit it. And then you'll just click the button that says start a new cloud observation. So remember clouds and land cover already exist in the app itself. So you could be practicing how to make those observations right now. And you can use that in your programming um, throughout the year. It doesn't have to be just an eclipse thing when you do clouds and land cover or any of the other globe observations. These are just a way for us to package it together specifically to answer some of those research questions around what happens in the atmosphere during an eclipse. All right, next slide. And what I think is the really the coolest part of this is in the app itself, we'll be doing a graph to show you what has been happening to the air temperature in your location. And these graphs, um, you can take a screen capture of it directly in your phone, but you can also share that um, on social media. And it's just a really nice way to quickly capture the data that you've been contributing as citizen scientists to this project. All right, and I think I just have one more. Yep, and that is, uh, we realize that's a lot of information. And so again, these slides are gonna be made available. And there's also a, a URL um, that's in your list, observer.globe.gov backslash eclipse. And when you go there, you'll be able to find a number of different resources related to GLOBE, implementing the GLOBE program, how to use the GLOBE programs app, Globe Observer, and another of other hands-on activity ideas for you. So with that, I'm gonna pass it off to Teresa for more information about the kits. Thank you, Jessica. And I am excited to be here because we are looking for library partners. If you could go to the next slide. And we have got Globe Eclipse library kits um, that we are gonna to distribute to up to 100 US public libraries. Applications are due May 31st, and we're targeting early June, mid-June to select and start notifying libraries. By the end of June, let everyone know the status of their application. And then during mid-June and July, start shipping out the kits. And so what our main objective is in selecting libraries is diversity of library partners. Uh, diversity geographically, we want partners both on and off the path of uh, totality or maximum eclipse, diversity in terms of the programming and the audience that you target. Um, we're gonna give priority to libraries who have clear plans to engage underserved audiences and those that are interested in and shown an ability to deliver engaging STEM programs, STEAM programs, and an interest in citizen science. So this slide shows what's in the kit. Um, these are resources to support your Globe Eclipse programming. Um, there are printed items, and all of those printed items are in both English and in Spanish. They're also available online to download, and they include a Globe Eclipse card. This is a, a handy little postcard that you can uh, use to promote Globe Eclipse. It's got the, the URL on the back, a little bit of text, and it's got a hole in the middle that you can use this as a uh, device to project the eclipse onto a surface. And so you get a pack of 100 of those. You'll get a pack of 100 each of the English and Spanish Globe Sky Windows. And this is a really simple, easy to do activity where you hold the sky window up and you can identify what type of cloud um, is in the sky. These are things to help prepare you to do the observations that are in the Globe Eclipse app. 
Uh, we've got a science storybook for children called Elementary Globe Clouds. And it, the name of the book is, Do You Know That Clouds Have Names? And there are 10 copies of both the English and Spanish version of the book in the kit. Um, this book also has really great notes for the educator, for the parent throughout the story. So you could use it for story time. It could be something someone reads alone. You could family, read it together. Really cool tool. Um, and then the final thing is a digital thermometer for measuring air. And as Jessica mentioned earlier, there's several different kinds of thermometers that you can use, but this particular one, it's a Taylor uh, six day maximum, minimum air temperature, soil temperature, water temperature thermometer. So we wanted to give you something you could use beyond the eclipse. So this is something that you could do science investigations, weather investigations. But if you wanted to go further and get more involved in GLOBE, you could do further training to do the full GLOBE air temperature protocol. So if you go to the next slide, just to walk you through eligibility, public libraries in the US, DC, or US territory can apply. Um, whether you're doing programming for the 2023 or 2024 or both, it's not required that you be on the path of totality. We need comparison data off the path of totality. Again, applications are due May 31st and the, the um, QR code will take you to the announcement page where you can link to the application. At the top of the application, you need to uh, fill out the application online but there's a PDF that you can download that has all the questions so you can gather that information before you do the, the online application. But it's gonna ask you questions about what audience you serve, uh, your prior experience of programming related to STEAM or to citizen science, what strategies you um, have to engage underserved audiences and your plans for doing programming um, using Globe Eclipse. There's not going to be a separate application for 2024. So if you're just planning 2024 activities, go ahead and apply for this kit. We're going to distribute everything in 2023. You go to the next slide. Some of the expectations of we'd like folks to either you're here, so you've done step one, this webinar, or, or to watch the recording on the Starnet Libraries YouTube. Um, we're going to have some monthly check-in, drop-in sessions during August and September. These are opportunities for us to share any new information with you, for you to ask questions, to brainstorm ideas, to share your plans, and then to offer at least one program that incorporates Globe Eclipse. These could be things leading up to the eclipse to prepare patrons to participate in doing Globe Observer Citizen Science, or they could be on Eclipse Day, either the October 14th or the April 8th eclipse. And we need you to complete evaluation surveys. Um, there'll be one survey after each eclipse, and then to join our Globe Eclipse Libraries team. If you go to the next slide, I'll, I'll say a little bit more about that in a couple of slides. Um, the timeline is May 31st for applications, distributing kits late June to July, the check-ins in August and September, um, the eclipse in October, and then we'll have the survey open until the end of October to take. If you go to the next slide, in 2024, we're going to start with a kickoff webinar in January, February timeframe to share back the data that was collected from the eclipse, all the citizen science data that was collected. So you could see um, a cool animation of the data from 2023, similar to the one that Jessica showed earlier for 2017. We'll share back the results from the eva first evaluation survey, and we'll invite libraries to share examples of what they did and reflect on their October programming and their plans for 2024. We'll again have monthly drop-ins in February and March, April eclipse, and then libraries will have until the end of April to complete the second evaluation survey. And then we're looking at late May, early June to have a briefing with library partners on the results of the Globe Observer Eclipse Citizen Science. So if you go to the next slide, you know, whether or not you get the kit, there are benefits for all libraries, we believe 
in um, participating in Globe Eclipse and Globe Observer. This is, as Jessica said, it's an ongoing citizen science project. It doesn't end with the eclipse. You can continue to take cloud observations, land cover, uh, tree height, and mosquito habitat mapping. Um, the activities and the resources are all available online for anyone to use. And one really cool thing that I wanted to mention is uh, Globe Teams. If you go to the next slide, this is something that anyone with a Globe account can set up. And a team can be used to set up a competition to coordinate citizen science efforts, uh, to support a group of people who want to work together. A family could set up a Globe Observer team. Um, and you can join as many teams as you want to. We'd like you to join our Globe Eclipse team. But we also know you'll want to set up your own teams. You can set up a main library team. You can set up teams for your branches. Your patrons can set up teams. Uh, they can be public or private. You just need to give out the referral code to folks you want to join your team. And on the right there, it just shows um, how a scout group in Australia, how they set up a team to take observations and share observations during a three-month competition. If you go to the next slide, um, you can use these to track impacts from an event. You'll see all the observations that people who are on your team take. So you can see whether people continue to take observations after your program. It's a way for people to take the science home and keep a connection with your library. And you'll see on the right there, I have an asset, my library team that I set up a while back for one of the things we worked on with uh, an asset, my libraries, libraries. And I'd invite you to join my team. The link on this slide will take you through all the instructions to do that. But basically you can do it in the app. At the bottom of the screen is a little gear setting button and you scroll down to globe teams where you can join a team you can create a team or find a team to go to the next slide um we've have libraries that we've worked with and i see some very familiar names in the um chat folks here today uh, that have, and thanks to los angeles public library la salle public library and the pioneer public library in oklahoma these are uh, photos from their programs that they've done with children, families, youth, adults, seniors. Uh, you see very traditional book displays to indoor, outdoor programs, the whole spectrum of programming. So if you go to the next slide, and I, I know, Kevin, I'm going to speed it up a little bit because I'm eating into your time. Uh, we've got several examples of STEAM activities that you can use to support your library programs. These three in particular, ones where you practice the things that you will be doing when you're doing Globe Eclipse. Uh, there's an estimate cloud cover activity that's creating a simple model with blue and white construction paper. There's a video demo by Jessica on a, a former StarNet webinar on how to do that activity and why to do that activity. Create a cloudscape activity where you can create a wall-sized mural at your library, or an individual can, can uh, create a paper-sized mural, individual mural. And our friends at StarNet uh, Libraries created a guide with lots of adaptations for using this in the library. And then the final one there I'm going to mention is the Do the Cloud Dance. So um, our NASA scientist, Madele Colon Robles, and her two daughters demonstrate the cloud dance and how you can uh, work with kinesthetic learners to learn about the different types of clouds, what their names are, and to remember what they look like. So if we go to the next slide, I'm gonna wrap up just by saying, if you're going to the American Library Association conference, come by our session on cloud watching for NASA that's gonna be on that Monday, June 26th. And we'll be presenting that, Jessica and I, with. Vivian Bird from Los Angeles Public Library and come by the NASA exhibit. Lots of us from, from, um, from StarNet, NASA at my library. Jessica and I will be there off and on throughout the conference. And I think that may be the last one. Yes, so I'm gonna hand it off to Kevin. Thanks, Teresa. All right, so I'm gonna talk about going further uh, what you could do You know, if you're having a program at your library for the solar eclipses. You can do the surface temperature part. And so uh, next slide. 
So here's some uh, like an outline of what we're looking at. Um, the University of Toledo would provide you with a infrared thermometer. We're looking at a total of 25 libraries to sign up. And it's, a, it's the same sign up as uh, Teresa was talking about. So you use the link. Uh, when you sign up, you can opt in to the service temperature observations. Uh, there will be a little extra training. I'll probably organize uh, about 45 minutes to an hour uh, training to do the surface temperature. Uh, then you'll become actually a globe trained person. Um, when Teresa and Jessica talked about the Globe Observer app, that's for citizen scientists and anybody can do it. Uh, but there's also a part of Globe that's for educators. And uh, that includes the atmosphere, hydrosphere, biosphere, and pedosphere. Uh, and those parts uh, need a little extra training. So that's what we would do. So we can go to the next slide. And I wanted to show you some pictures from the 2017 solar eclipse when people were uh, taking surface temperature observations. Uh, in addition to the cloud and air temperature uh, observations that we already talked about. And we can go to the next slide. And why do we talk about, or why do we want to take a service temperature observations? And the reason we want to do that is that it's at the heart of the energy budget. Of course, the sun is providing the energy for the earth, so the sunlight's coming through. It heats the surface, and then the energy at the surface goes into evapotranspiration. You know, that's the evaporating of water or transpiring through plants. Some goes into heating the air, and that's a sensible heat. And then some of the energy is emitted back to space as long wave radiation. And that's the type of energy that's absorbed by greenhouse gases and uh, contributing to climate change and global warming. So that's why surface temperature is such a, an important variable. And it really adds into our understanding of the earth and how the solar eclipse will affect the temperature in our environment. So we go to the next slide. Uh, this shows you how to use your infrared thermometer. And uh, we want uh, patrons to put their arm out arm's length, push the button, let go of the button, and look at the value. We'll send you out a kit, and then it'll we'll have uh, places to put your values uh, for a person to do it. And I'll have a, a time just like uh, with the Globe Observer. And uh, I'll just um, now, many people have infrared thermometers, so you, you know, I'll send you one, but you might want to have more because there are some around from the pandemic, of course. We can go to the next slide. And this is some of the data from the 2017 uh, solar eclipse. And, and Jessica showed this already. You see the uh, air temperature on the left and the clouds on the right. The surface temperature we took is in the middle. And you see there's a lot less sites, of course, because you have to have that uh, training as an educator. We had a lot of uh, sites. We sent uh, kits out to people who were going to be on totality. And then we had our schools that were in Ohio and Michigan. But uh, this time we want to get a broader um, spectrum of, uh, of uh, locations, uh, off totality as well, on totality and off totality. So that's why we're uh, working with you. It would be great and very helpful. Uh, oh, and you see our um, reference here to Raman et al. 2019. We published this information, uh, uh, just like uh, Jessica had mentioned, their publication as well. So we can go to the next slide. And here's some of the data. Uh, surface temperature is the green line on top. Air temperature is the red line. You can see how surface temperature dropped about nine degrees Celsius in this location in Nebraska. Uh, and then air temperature only dropped about three. So you see this dramatic change in surface temperature, and then it rebounds after totality and, or, or after the maximum eclipse and when the sun comes back. And then, uh, but there's also a lag. The surface temperature goes down first and then starts going up, but the air temperature continues to go down. So these are some of the th interesting things where you can learn from taking this, these observations. And also there's an impact on clouds, which is really interesting. All right, next slide. Uh, students have done projects uh, using this data and through GLOBE, students do projects and present projects. And Dylan had mentioned that uh, some libraries do projects. I, uh, Dylan, I don't know if you wanted to add to that or not. Uh, for the eclipse or? Just in general, I think you were mentioning that because um, this could uh, facilitate projects at libraries. Oh, yeah, I was just saying this is some of these uh, projects, if you've got like a 
teen STEM club or tween STEM club, using these data sets is a great way to like explore data analysis. So you can do the data collection as well as do some programming uh, with, uh, if you've got a STEM club or even an adult uh, uh, enthusiasts, you can do the whole process from start to finish. So there's some good programming ideas involved there too. Yeah, thank you. All right, go to the next slide. And uh, this is a an activity uh, doing surface temperature that was developed not for the solar eclipse, but can be used at other times. And uh, Jessica shared this, so you could use this as well. And it's part of the StarNet uh, resources. I could mention that um, the same these same observations we're doing for the solar eclipse are used also for urban heat island studies. So there are many communities studying urban heat island uh, to address how neighborhoods might be warmer than others and how we can address that uh, maybe with planting trees. So that there's more you can do with these observations uh, before and after the solar eclipse. And then I think the last slide is just my contact our contact information for, for this group. I want to thank everybody. Looking forward to doing this. All right, excellent. So uh, thanks uh, to Teresa, Jessica, and Kevin for sharing all that great information uh, to uh, uh, about Globe Observer and how to get started with these kits. Uh, and be doing uh, some really cool observations and data collection with Globe Observer uh, before, after, and during the eclipse. Really, really excited uh, that we get to share all this information with y'all. Uh, so now we've got about uh, 14 minutes left in the webinar. I think that's just enough time to open up uh, the floor um, and have y'all uh, ask any questions you might have about any of the information we've covered today uh, or uh, anything like that. So Nicole asked in the chat, will these slides and presentation be sent to the attendees? Um, we're not going to be sending them out individually, uh, but we will be posting a PDF of the slides uh, uh, beneath the recording of the webinar, as well as on the webinar page on StarNet's website. Uh, so you can go ahead and check out those if you are looking to get uh, these slides um, there. You can also, I highly recommend part of the reason we're recording this webinar is we know that the Eclipse app is not going to be available via Globe Observer uh, until the eclipses. Uh, so uh, be sure to, we'll be, I'll be posting um, this uh, webinar recording by the end of day tomorrow to the StarNet YouTube channel. Go ahead and um, subscribe to our channel. A, you get tons of, you'll get access to all of our recorded webinars, how to videos, all that good stuff. Um, but you'll also be able to uh, uh, refer back to this webinar um, if you want to prep for the eclipses. Um, the StarNet link again. So um, let me go ahead and actually, let me stop my screen share. I'll go ahead and get our YouTube link for you. And while you're doing that, one question that was in the chat, someone asked, do you use the same application form for the Globe Eclipse Library Kit, as well as the infrared thermometer? And the answer is yes, you can use it um, for both. All right, and there is the link to our uh, YouTube channel is at StarNet Libraries. Uh, so, uh, John said the application for Eclipse Spirit presented by Tria says, okay, so that question has been covered. How long does it take to get a confirmation when you apply for the solar classes? I put in the application over a month ago and worried it didn't go through. Um, if you completed your application, including a letter from someone in your administration, uh, uh, that uh, that says they're aware of your application and they're approving your application. You should have gotten a confirmation email um, when uh, when you finish your registration. If not, uh, if you would like more information, I'm going to go ahead and um, Sky is always so happy when I do this. Um, I'm going to put uh, Sky Reed Mills. They're our admin person. Um, they are handling all of our registrations. Um, that email address uh, right there, S. Reed Mills at spacescience.org. You can reach out to Sky. Um, and ask them about uh, connecting, uh, checking on your registration, making sure that's complete. Let's see. Um, uh, as always, all of the links we've covered today are in the Getting Started with Seal uh, resource blog post that Claire has put in the chat. Uh, make sure to bookmark that. That's kind of a living blog post. As we do more webinars, develop more resources, we're adding links to that all the time. So highly recommend bookmarking uh, that page. Um, I've updated uh, with at least, I think, seven or eight new links just in the past week alone. Um, so there is um, 
Some great information there. Barbara said, I'm not able to attend our state eclipse training in Vermont. Is there information available uh, from another training? We are covering a lot of the information from the in-person trainings in our virtual trainings, like our getting started uh, with SEAL virtual webinars. Um, highly recommend uh, attend, uh, registering and attending one of those. We also, if the times available don't work for those, we do have a recorded version of that Getting Started with SEAL uh, webinar that is linked in the Getting Started with SEAL blog post and is on our YouTube channel. Uh, so I highly, if you, if you can't make it to the in-person ones or any of our scheduled Getting Started with SEAL virtual webinars, there is that recorded version available on YouTube. Um, is there a list of GLOBE-related library programs that have already been done as an inspiration? That's actually a, probably a great question uh, for Teresa, Jessica, and Kevin. Yes, and in fact, I had a link to that in my slide, but I heard from uh, my person who was putting the site up, he didn't quite have it up. So that link will be in the link of um, links, the link of links that um, Dylan will be posting. Um, we've got several examples of library programs, how they put Material, different materials together to do different kinds of programs. So that should be up, if not later today, then definitely by tomorrow. And we'll keep adding to that as you start developing your plans for your programs. We hope to incorporate some of those into what we have on the website. Absolutely. Yeah. Any links that uh, aren't currently on there will definitely be up by the end of the day today. So go ahead and bookmark that page and check back. Uh, we will have all those links uh, with tons of information uh, uh, on there. Also, um, if you are interested, I highly recommend checking out the STEM Activity Clearinghouse. Uh, we have, uh, we've mentioned these in our previous webinars, highly recommend checking out the programming uh, for the, with Citizen Science for the Eclipse webinars, which are also on our YouTube page. Uh, we do have a step-by-step -step on how to find uh, resources on the STEM Activity Clearinghouse. We actually have uh, at least one or two activities uh, about Globe Observer on the STEM Activity Clearinghouse that thing have things like uh, preparation and facilitation guides, um, adaptations about how to turn these into take and make kits or virtual programming. A lot of good resources uh, for if you're looking for programming inspiration on the uh, STEM Activity Clearinghouse, which is clearinghouse.sarnetlibraries.org. Um, Christine, uh, the, uh, we will not be emailing out an email of this recording, but it will be available by the end of day tomorrow on our YouTube page, youtube.com uh, slash at Starnet Libraries. Uh, Casey, we have uh, not uh, developed a um, uh, certificate for these webinars for PD. Um, if that's something you're interested in, I think we could probably come up with something. Uh, go ahead and reach out to me in my email. It's, uh, I'll put it in the chat again, uh, dconnolly at spacescience.org, and I will look into getting you some sort of confirmation of a certificate of uh, attendance. Oh, Claire has also said, in addition to our YouTube page, we also, um, if you happen to register for uh, this webinar or any of our webinars, uh, through Starnet's uh, webinar hub on our website. Um, we also, in, uh, for each page uh, that we announce those on uh, those webinars on, uh, we post both the recording of the webinar as well as uh, the PDF of the slides uh, and uh, the chat transcript. Uh, we post all of that to uh, the webinar page uh, that we have there for registration on our website as well. Uh, so you can check out that. Claire has provided a link to that webinars page, our archived webinars page, uh, in the chat. And I think someone asked what the referral code was to join the Dasset My Library Globe team. And I will, it's on the slide, but I will find that and put it in the chat. Oh, and Kevin, I just want to highlight that he, uh, Kevin just put this in the chat, the Globe Observer. I know that uh, we've had a lot of people put in the chat. I actually checked it out myself. I just upgraded to a Pixel 7, and it looks like my version of Android uh, is uh, too too new for Globe Observer as well. Uh, but Kevin is just heard back from the Globe Observer app tech people that say they're working on the download problem, getting that updated so that the uh, it will work for the latest versions of Android. So uh, I will keep checking on that, and I will be sure to... Uh, 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 to, to, to note, and I will post to our Starnet community website uh, uh, when it looks like that is updated. Yeah, and Dylan, um, if I could just add, those of you who have sent me your contacts, I will send you an email um, when it gets updated. But as Kevin mentioned, um, the IT folks are probably feverishly working on it right now that we told them. 
So uh, thank you. Yeah. And those of you who sent your uh, your uh, phone type and everything, that's also helpful. So they can uh, make sure to adjust for all. And Kim, I just saw that you asked this question that will all the links in the chat be saved as well? Yes, uh, we post chat transcripts um, along with the uh, the recording uh, of the webinar and the uh, slides. So um, they will, that chat transcript, which will include all the links that we put in the chat today, uh, will be available uh, uh, on, in the video description on the YouTube page uh, once we post this uh, webinar uh, by the end of day tomorrow and will be included on the archived webinar page uh, that Claire shared out earlier. So you'll be able to access that chat, chat transcript and all the links uh, through there. Also, all of the links that we have been sharing out today are also available on the Getting Started with SEAL blog post. Claire, I'm going to ask you to throw that in the chat one more time. Um, and so please bookmark this page. This includes the links all for all the links we've covered in the webinar today, as well as all the links from all of our SEAL virtual training uh, series webinars, both our Getting Started with SEAL webinar and our previous citizen science webinars about in getting started with citizen science, programming with citizen science. And we also have an additional webinar on the 16th uh, with another fantastic citizen science project called Eclipse Soundscapes. Uh, and we will be posting all the links from that webinar as well. So everything you need that we've covered in our virtual training are going to be available in like getting started with SEAL blog post. Uh, Kim, uh, so I'm sorry you missed the beginning. Um, we will not be sending out emails. There's a lot of registrants uh, for, for these webinars. Um, but um, I highly recommend uh, getting registered for our glasses. You can reach out uh, and signing up for our SEAL newsletter. Um, if you want to reach out, I'm putting my email in the chat. Um, if you want to get signed up for our newsletter, um, where we will be sharing all of the SEAL relevant information, including stuff from uh, the citizen science webinars and upcoming uh, resources like uh, pro professional training, uh, professional development trainings coming up, uh, opportunities for uh, kits and other, uh, other fantastic things, uh, we can get you hooked up with that newsletter uh, so you can keep abreast with all things SEAL. Uh, Sherry, if you can actually just reach out um, to uh, me via email, um, I, 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 I pre uh, if you could reach out to me about the deconnelly at spacescience.org, um, uh, I can direct you to how to get to register for that newsletter. Um, just uh, send me an email and I'll forward that, your, your information on to who needs to get you signed up there. We got just a few more minutes. Uh, the referral code, solitude, that referral code was to get started with the uh, NASA at My Library Globe Observer team, correct, Teresa? That's correct. So when you um, go into the settings on the app, press the little gear button in the bottom right-hand corner and scroll down and you pick join the team and put that referral code in and you'll be you'll show up when you take observations on our NASA at My Library team. Excellent. And I also highly recommend um, checking out our YouTube channel. We have a playlist of all of our SEAL virtual trainings that we've done so far. Um, you can check out all of those. All of our webinars are about an hour. However, we do break them down by uh, subject and theme and chapters uh, on our YouTube channel. So you can easily come back to them and watch, you know, one part of it during a lunch break or in between uh, story hours. I know we're getting into summer reading time, so y'all are super, super busy. Uh, but so we, we do try and make that convenient. So all of our webinars, uh, if you ever need to re uh, uh, refer back to this, um, uh, uh, there are, all of those webinars are on our YouTube channel uh, with those timestamp descriptions uh, for you to review all this information uh, for the first time or uh, to, to catch up if you uh, want to review anything we've covered. Kim, I think you're asking about the YouTube channel. I put the link in the chat, but then uh, the link to uh, uh, the, that YouTube channel is also on the Getting Started with Steel resource blog post uh, that we've been using as a link bank that Claire has been sending out throughout uh, the chat. So that link is also in the chat. Okay. All right. Well, we are just about at the end of the hour. I'm always in awe of how well we time these. I'm always worried we're going to go over and then it's always just by a hair we're getting in under the wire. Uh, so I really appreciate all of y'all attending today. 
really fantastic attendance today. I could not be thrilled. You all asked some fantastic questions. I want to thank Claire for her help with chat support. Teresa, Kevin, and Jessica, thanks so much for joining us and sharing out all this information about uh, the Globe Observer Program. Uh, could not uh, be more thrilled to share this information out, uh, out with uh, our Starnet librarians uh, through SEAL. Uh, really, really excited to help people connect through the eclipse uh, and participate in such an amazing project. Uh, so thanks everyone for attending today. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day, rest of your week, and an amazing weekend. Uh, enjoy Star Wars Day. May the fourth be with you. Uh, I know I'm going to be checking out the new season of Star Wars Visions after work today. I'm very excited. Um, so yeah, this is the May indeed. Uh, so thanks so much for attending everyone. Uh, a fantastic webinar. I hope you have a great rest of your day and have a good one.